All right. Welcome to the Copywriters Barbecue Episode 3. I'm your host, Keith Howard, and today we're going to look at a tasty morsel in my portfolio. Why? Because I'm going to put this video in my portfolio. Why? Two reasons. One, I want to stand out. Duh. And two, because I want to save my best client's time by showing my stupid face and my not stupid writing so they can decide instantly if, number one, I'd be cool to work with. Number two, if I can get the job done. Three, if I have a Costco size ego or if I'm a grown up. And four, if they think I have the constitution of character to deal with direct feedback. So without further ado, let's take a look at Keith's high ticket coaching email. So first, I'm going to read it cold so you can hear the rhythm. Then I'm going to carve this turkey up and reveal all the fall off the bone persuasion tactics that I've stuffed in here. Let's go. So first, a little bit about the target market. 30 to 50s, they're successful. They want to escape office space because they no longer find it to be meaningful. Um, they're having a little trouble finding the right program. And uh, the traffic source here is warm. This is essentially a nurture email. And our offer is very high ticket. So this needs to be very persuasive. If we start here with the subject line, say goodbye to your core stacking phase. What happens when you stop core stacking? And confessions of a former course stacker. So in this email, what we're doing is we are renaming a pain point and then controlling a definition in a persuasive way. So first the cold read. Let's get really honest for a minute. Do you think of yourself as a course stacker? I know I had that issue. I was constantly craving the latest, greatest, shiniest step-by-step -step process to skyrocket my business. That one last thing needed to nail marketing, have a stunning website, and jaw-dropping copy. Complete with 40 hours of video training to keep my mind off the fact that I was burning through more money than I'd ever admit to anyone, especially my family. And the bigger my course stack got, the more I felt like I was only getting a part of the puzzle, not the full picture. To be fair with you and all those course creators up front, many, business, many business building courses aren't bad, but there's one glaring reason why most folks, including me, won't get any results from them. And it's not because you need another step-by-step -step process. It's not because you need one thing before you're ready. And it's not because you aren't cut out to be a successful entrepreneur. The truth is, I didn't find the answer until I stopped looking. That was when I realized why I was never going to find the golden needle in my course stack. A realization that took me from dead in the water to publish twice in Forbes. And I want to share it with you, my fellow course stacker. So if you're ready to stop chasing needles and start moving forward with a masterful, meaningful six-figure business this year, then you can discover it all right here on our name. And this is 259 words. And if we carve this up, this one should not be here. All right, so we start off with the pattern interrupt. And then the next line, we're making it about the reader. We're introducing what we have renamed. Um, and we also open a loop here. So I know I had that issue. It's hinting at a solution here. This next part here, we're basically throwing rocks at the common coaching tropes. Um, especially this one, step-by-step -step process. Uh, I am so tired of seeing this everywhere. It doesn't mean anything. Everybody uses it. If you want to stand out, you need to figure out something different for this because it's pretty much just a hack line now, at least in my opinion. Um, 
Also, just a nod to how cliche these lines are, but how how difficult the actual task is, how hard it is to pull everything together. Um, down here, again, we're throwing rocks. 40 hours of video training. Um, but we're going to twist the knife here a little bit with this line, the especially my family part. If you are hiding money from your family because you're buying too many courses, that's going to hurt. Um, and you'll notice down here, this one, after I twisted the knife, I gave him a break. Uh, I could have made this part like even worse, blah, blah, blah. But I don't think, uh, at least in my opinion, I like to pe hit people hard one time and then let them recover a bit. So down here we start with the teasing. So I was only getting uh, a part of the puzzle, not the full picture. And then this part, very important, we have to address the elephant in the room. Obviously, uh, as I'm writing this email, I am uh, selling coaching courses. And it's, it's very common to be the anti-coach coach. coach. So it's sort of dispelling that from their minds right away. And this part here, we're just teasing. This is just an epic amount of teasing to get the click. And down here, this golden needle part, um, I sort of renamed this. You could run with this as uh, a hook for another email to draw people in. You could do like a mindset course with it. And then down here, again, same thing, like hit them hard one time. So a realization that took me from dead in the water to publish twice in Forbes. And this is something that, that you know, you'd, you'd say to struggling entrepreneurs, you say, what do you want? And they'd say something like, oh, I want more clients or, or oh, I want to make more money. But I think this is a good example of knowing the target market better than they know themselves because this is what they really want. Uh, down here, a little bit of feelings of inclusion. And then at the end here, close the needles loop. And then moving forward with a masterful, meaningful, a little bit of alliteration, six-figure business this year. So it's a little bit of urgency there. Um, and then our link is... Uh, deliverability friendly. There's no giant free in all cops. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you enjoyed this video and you're still watching all the way to the end, um, give me a shout because this is in my portfolio and I should have written a better conclusion for this. That's okay. I'll get them next time. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.